Hey guys, it's Nate with Zebros, and today we're gonna go over the basics of putting on our 34 inch A-arm kit for the Skidoo Gen 4 and Gen 5, and your links. So, we have our kit laid out here. It is pretty straightforward because basically you're removing factory parts and just reversing that process uh, when you're going back on, but we'll give you the steps and the basic hand tools that you're gonna need. Hopefully that helps you out on those applications like the XP1000. We supply a divider that's cut down. Fill it nut. Another Honda Talon. Uh, this happens to be a 1000R. All right, so the hand tools that you're gonna need, you're gonna need a ratchet, 19 millimeter socket, 16 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket. These are all deep and then a T25 Torx to remove your hood, 19 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter wrench, 16 millimeter wrench, 15 millimeter wrench, and then a 13 millimeter and a 12 millimeter wrench. And then some type of spring puller to get your pipe off and a measuring tape to check your alignment after you're done. All right, so we have a Gen 4 here that already has a set of A-arms installed on it. Um, it's going to be the same whether you're working with factory parts. This happens to have our 36 inch kit on it. So, but the process is going to be the same. First step is going to be to get your side panels and your hood off and remove your pipe. That's going to give you a lot easier access to all the nuts and bolts you're going to need access to remove the A-arms. All right, to after your side panels are off to remove your hood, you got to have a Torx and I grabbed the wrong one. All right, so using a T25, you wanna remove these Torx that hold your pod in. And removing your hood's gonna vary a little bit on the Gen 5 and on the Lynx, but it's pretty similar. And then, your pod can come out on this. I'm just gonna hang on to all the screws in here so I don't lose them. And then underneath your, right in front of your handlebars, there's two more Torx on the Gen 4. You're gonna wanna remove those. And then there's Two more right here. And this one has a washer on it, so pay attention to that and make sure you reuse the same screw. Okay, those are the six. And then down inside here, you wanna unhook your headlights. And then the hood this is connected to the remove that plug and these can just kind of be tucked up here by your handlebars now the whole hood is actually loose and you can take the hood off we want to remove the pipe so it's 17 mil to remove this pipe sensor and then there's these little clips that just slide off to give you access to the springs and we don't need to remove the can, but we do need to remove the actual pipe. So those springs have to come off and then there's some springs down inside where the Y pipe connects to the cylinders. 17 millimeter, remove the pipe sensor. I think that's standard across the board. And then you can unhook that. And just kind of tuck this out of the way. And then you're gonna need some type of spring puller on these, uh, on the skidoos usually. One of these long ones works really good because in order to reach down to these ones, it's, it's a bit tricky. It's gonna be hard to see on video, but that's why you want a long spring puller. <clears throat> Now you gotta slide the pipe all the way forward as far as you can to get it to come out because there's a 
piece here that holds on to a rubber grommet so it won't come out until you slide it all the way off that. <clears throat> All right, so probably the easiest is going to be to get your shock out of the way. So on this particular model, it happens to be a 12 millimeter and a 13 millimeter to remove the lower shock bolt and the upper shock bolt. Stock shock is going to mount the same way. This happens to have a set of our exit shocks on here, but process is the same so remove the lower shock bolt hang on to those bolts they're going to get reused all right one other thing to note sometimes undoing your upper ball joint and lifting it out of the spindle will give you a little bit more room to get your shock out the other item that is not shown but you will have to remove is the sway bar. We don't run a sway bar with the dual or triple rate spring combination. So there'd be a little uh, eight millimeter bolt right here connecting to the arm to your sway bar. You would need to remove that. <clears throat> and ball joint nut should be 19 millimeters. So now that we have that removed from the spindle, we want to pull the upper A-arm all the way off. And it's a 15 and a 16. So you're gonna hold the nut on the inside here. So look a tiny bit different because we have our gusset plate on here. So this is in double shear. But normally you would just uh, have your bolt and washer in single shear so there, there wouldn't be anything here. So that's another great product for the Gen 4 is this bulkhead brace kit. And then on this rear one, it is actually held in the nut is held captive in a little slot that's hidden behind here i don't know if you can it's kind of if you pull the can out if you pull the can out you can see it there's a slot down here that holds the nut so that's one area that you want to be you want to be careful so you don't drop that nut obviously you don't want that to fall out because if you if it does fall out you've got to pull your can off to slide it back in that slot so usually I'm just careful when I pull this bolt out and put it back in and leave the chassis level and try not to rock it around a whole bunch. And you can just let it sit in there, but you don't have to have a wrench on the other side to hold it. So, all right, now pulling this upper arm off, you wanna pay attention, there's some washers. There's gonna be one against the chassis here and then the same thing up front. So, kind of see it fall out on me. Those have to go back in. So, now one thing to note on the uppers, it, the arm's gonna come pre-installed with ball joints, but these pins and these plastic bushings are gonna get reused. So, in your stock arm, it's gonna be the same way. So. You're gonna to wanna to hang on to those parts and put those back in the new arm. All right, so now the kit is supplied with a tie rod um, that you would change out. So at this point, you'd wanna undo, undo it from the spindle, remembering that there is a washer on either side. So pay attention to how that uh, joint comes out. Now there is quite a bit of room and because you're, if you are putting a 34 inch kit back on, replacing a sled that already has a 34. You wouldn't need to change the tie rod out with the 36. Um, it's recommended to change it out, but there is quite a bit of adjustment room. Uh, as you can see here, we have about a half an inch in here uh, on the inside as well as the outside. So we're going to attempt to adjust the, the tie rod just 
in as far as it will go and see if we can align this with the factory 36 inch tie rod. I think there's enough room, but I'll have to let you know in the video. And if there's not, then you would need to spin the tie rod off and put the new shorter tie rod on when you go to the 34. Okay, to remove your lower arm, you've got to undo your lower ball joint with the 19 millimeter, just like the upper and knock the joint out of the spindle. So tapping on the spindle will usually knock the taper loose so that it'll fall out. This sled's been torn apart a couple of times, but if you wanna tape off, put a, some masking tape around the front for where you're hitting with the hammer so it doesn't ding up the spindle, that's helpful. So now we'll get the spindle out of the way and then we've got to undo the two lower uh, bolts. And you'll have to do those from up inside the snowmobile. So looking down in here, you can see the two bolts, the forward here and the, the rear back there, kind of hidden behind the steering. So it's a 15 and a 16. Ratchet wrenches make it nice. You can try to get a socket down in there. A couple of ways to do it. Okay, so I got the rear bolt out. Keep track of your washer. That'll get reused. It's a good time to clean all of your exhaust dripping oil from down inside at this point and vacuum out the bottom of your bolt head. All right, so with those two bolts out, you can pull the lower arm out. And again, you're gonna reuse these little clips. So there's a little metal clip you wanna hang on to, and then both plastic bushings, and then a pin or sleeve. And that's gonna go back in the new arm. All right, so we have the new arm here. We're gonna start by putting our bushings back in with our sleeve. And then these super awesome little metal clips that seem to always make it hard to go back together. We should just slide in and then pay attention. Your nut is still back in that little pocket. So when you slide that rear bolt in, you wanna make sure that you get it started by hand. So line back up your nut for the rear one, start it by hand. And then the front one, same deal. You just gotta line it up, shove it through, put your wash, make sure your washer's on the correct side and tighten back up. So I'm just using a 3 h drive ratchet with a deep socket in this location. It seems to work good. It just barely clears the Y pipe allows you to tighten it. All right, so we're gonna snug back up our lower ball joint with our 19 millimeter. And if it starts to spin and not get tight, you can just stop and wait until you put the shock on and the weight on the sled to get this ball joint all the way tight. Sometimes they'll cooperate like this one. Once they start to get tight in the taper, you'll be able to snug them up and then just tighten that to your factory torque spec. All right, so on the upper A arm, it's gonna come with your ball joint pre-installed. You are going to reuse your washer and your nut from your stock A arm. It's the same thread pitch, so make sure you don't chuck those. Slide your bushings in and also make sure you've located the correct upper. This happens to be the right hand that we're working on here to show you the process. All right, so this is where you can be super grateful to those French Canadian engineers where you have to feed these washers back in. So I'd like to say that there is a super easy way to do it, but I try to do the front 
first because there's kind of a pocket there that gets in your way and just start the bolt through so it doesn't fall out. And then this rear one is easier to slide in. Sometimes you have to get a screwdriver to kind of push the washer in. It sort of holds itself in there, but I promise you, sometimes they're a pain in the butt. I've done it enough that I've kind of got a little system figured out. And this is that one where that nut should still be in there. So that's why I've tried not to move the chassis around and let that nut fall out. I'm able to just start it by hand. Now it's in the nut and to the nylock. We can put the front one on and tighten both of these bolts down to our factory torque specifications with the 15 and 16 millimeter wrenches. Okay, torque your inner mount and then tighten up your upper ball joint into the taper. Okay, now at this point, you would want to do your other side to this same uh, location of insulation and then get your shocks on and we'll work on how to do an alignment. All right, so We've now got our shocks back on, everything is tight, and we've put the skis back on and we've put weight on the sled. We've checked our upper and lower ball joints to make sure that they're torqued. And now we wanna do a ski alignment. So we talked about the tie rods. This being a 34 inch kit, it's gonna be supplied with tie rods, but what we're learning on these 36 inch skidoos is their tie rod is, is very short already and there's a whole bunch of adjustment. So we essentially just turned the tie rod all the way in and shortened it, which uh, is not a bad thing. So we're pretty close to bottomed out and the skis are visually straight. And this is where having a buddy to hold the ski straight or you can use um, tie down straps to hold your bars at a straight position and just visually line them up. And then from there, while holding it straight, you want to measure from center of skag to center of skag or find a flat surface on the ski and just measure in front of the spindle and behind the spindle and try to get them as straight as possible and then just get it out on the trail and pay attention if it's uh, darty or if it tends to, to drive one direction down a nice groomed trail. Sometimes the bars might just be barely off and you'll have to adjust. So we're gonna recommend that you set them up as straight as possible. At this point, we like to do it with the weight of the sled on the ground, not in the air. Uh, and just get the skis as straight as possible. So it's a little bit of a back and forth, but if you can visually get both sides straight and then get an even measurement in front of and behind the spindle while the bars are held straight, you'll be good to go. All right, so we have everything tight. We've done an initial alignment. And as we noted, we were able to get the 36 inch tie rods to work. It's almost all the way bottomed out, but we do have it straight, so may not be that way on every single sled because there is some variance but uh, as we told you the kit does come with a shorter tie rod so and then we need to put the pipe back on so the thing to remember is to line up this dart again before you slide the pipe in down here and then start with these two springs and then work towards the y pipe Definitely make sure you have all of the springs in your hand so you can drop them. You have to chase them down out of the bottom. All right, so we have everything back together and we have the 34 inch A-arm installed. Again, this A-arm kit is gonna work for the Skidoo Gen 4, the new Gen 5, and then the Lynx models in the mountain uh, sleds. Now, some of the cool features are this utilizes the same length of shock as the 36 inch stance. So if you want to convert and go narrower, it's easily done. Uh, and don't forget to like and share and subscribe. And if you have questions or concerns, reach out and you can always shop online at zebrosracing.com or your local Zebros dealer.